<laughs> well, if it isn't Mr. Smarty McTall Shoulders back for more. Hey, what's up, YouTube land? Mgo here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the Transformers Generations Combiner Wars Leader Class Ultra Magnus! So here we are, and there he is, and first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. So here it is, you have a nice picture there of Magnus! And on the back, you know, you have the little schematic -y stuff, Transformers in red and black, because they know me so well! Autobot logo right there, there... On this side, you have a nice picture there of Magnus and Ambrus. I don't know. On the back of the box, you have your obligatory product shots, 25 steps, 3 steps. And you have your bio there if you'd like to read it. And if you want to read it in some other languages, you can also read those. So, yay! So, there you go. That's basically it for the packaging. So moving right along, here we have Leader Class Ultra Magnus, who is a very nice figure, but um, Hasbro QC definitely got me on this guy, <laughs> and I'll get to that a little bit later, but yeah, QC, they, they need some better of that, but um, again, I'll get to that in a bit, but yes, um, here is Ultra Magnus, first thing we'll look at here is Little Minimish Ambish. And you can see this little kind of space car. You know, very simple paint scheme. Just white, black windshield. A little bit of kind of like highlighter green going on there. Little Autobot logo. You know, it's pretty much right under there. Um, very small, as you can see. Here he is next to a uh, blackjack. As you can see, he's he's tiny. And here he is with the uh, with the roller that comes with the uh, Legends Optimus. So yeah. He's your little guy. He's your little guy. Very nice. Um, no wheels. He doesn't roll or anything. Um, he can't really, I mean, he can kind of sit in the trailer here. Uh, I found that this little platform right here is like the perfect size for him, so he can kind of just rest right up here. Um, he can't sit in the cockpit because Magnus's head is in there and takes up all the space, so he can't actually sit in the cab. Um, but, you know. It is what it is. Um, transformation is very simple. It is three steps. You just flip down the legs. Oops. Rip off his leg. That's the first time that's happened. Of course, because the camera's on. But anyway, flip out the legs. You just untab his arms from the side, and then this whole backpack section's on a double hinge. You just take it, and you bring it back. Like that. And there you got a little Minimus Ambus in robot mode. And again, very simple. Not a whole lot of paint apps. You know, he painted his face. A couple different shades of green. He's got little red eyes. I mean, it's a nice mold. It, you know, it'd be nice if the had a little bit more paint, but hey, it is what it is. And for comparison, here he is with the uh, little Target Master that came with gears. Or Swerve, rather. So, there he is. See? He's a little guy. Little, little guy. There you go. Um, Articulation-wise, uh, he just has ball-jointed shoulders, ball-jointed hips, and that knee hinge there, which due to transformation, he has full range of movements. So, there you go. Little minimish ambush. He's so precious. So, so precious. You can see how he scales here with the vehicle. So, yeah. He's a little guy. Little, little guy. We'll just put him off to the side for now and focus on Magnus himself. So yes, he is a very nice truck, very indicative of G1 Magnus, but very much IDW Ultra Magnus, and I do like the design very, very much. I mean, I, I said a long time ago, I love the IDW designs, I want toys of them, and I still want toys of them, I want more. Um, please, Hasbro, give us an IDW Rodimus, please, 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 I'm begging you. <laughs> but um, as far as Magnus goes, very nice, nice silver paint here on the front grill. Some yellow, nice Autobot symbol right there, black windshields, silver goes down to sides, silver smokestacks. Um, you know, paint-wise, not a lot of paint on him. It's just different colored plastics here. A little bit of red here, some more silver back here. And, uh, yeah. Um, one issue that has been reported was, uh, and, and I've seen pictures and I've seen videos where the cab actually kind of pitched up a little bit, so those front wheels were not 
on the floor. He was kind of doing a wheelie. Um, mine does not have that problem. All of the wheels are on the ground. All of the wheels roll. So I don't know if that's a case of your mileage may vary. Mine does not have that problem. Everything stays just fine. Even when you push this back in, which again is an option if you want things to be a little more compact, you can always just take it in boop, and compress that. And again, still everything everything uh, rolls just fine. And to extend it back out, you want to pull the, uh, the section down and then pull it forward. There you go. So, yeah. So, it's an issue that mines doesn't have. Again, you know, your mileage may vary. Uh, the cab does rotate fully and freely. So, you can totally do U-turns and everything. And of course, the back can open up to give him the little ramp. He can accommodate, let's say, a Combiner Wars Stunticon. You close that up. You see there are little tabs. Little tabs right here that just go into little little slots right there and just lock everything in once you have it closed up and Minimus just fell off the table I will pick him up in a second <laughs> he just took a dive off the table I don't want to live anymore but anyway there you go you can support a Combiner Wars deluxe car and you can have it sitting on top if you wish doesn't not the most secure thing in the world but you can do that if you want. Oops. And things are coming untapped. Because I'm just being all ham-fisted with him. There we go. Let me close that back up. So you have that. And again, just for a comparison, there he is with Combiner Wars Stunticon. Just so you can see how he scales. Um, and again, if you want to get some, some of the Legends dudes, like here's you know, Swerve and Tailgate. He can, he can accommodate two of these smaller vehicles. If you want to go that route. And let's see, let's do some other comparisons here. Here he is with the Classics Prime Mold, which was repainted into Ultra Magnus. So you can see how that works. So definitely the cab is way, way smaller, but that's how he scales there. Here he is with the Combiner Wars Prime. So again, you can see how that looks right there. Uh, here he is with Generations RC. Again, just for a sense of scale. Here he is with... Uh, he's kind of heavy. Here he is with Masterpiece Magnus. So you can see how he scales with his Masterpiece counterpart. You can see totally different scales there. So there's Masterpiece Magnus. And of course, because I got a, with the G1, Precious Magnus, Precious. There he is. With a G1 Ultra Magnus. So. There you go. Whoops. Hey, this should be falling out on me. So there you go. There he is with G1 Magnus. And, yeah, they, oh, one thing I forgot. I always forget the most important part of this whole package. Ah, the collector's card. Yay, collector's card. Nice piece of artwork, though. I really do like that. There he is, Magnus, Minimus. Yay, cards. Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> now let's get down to accessories. He does come with his gun right here, which is very nice. I like the design here. Very cool. There is storage. There is a post right there. And it will plug into the ports right here on the side. So you can plug that in. He comes with a second gun right here. Which again, just cast in black plastic right there. And there's a post right here. And you take that and you plug that in to the other side right there. Now, QC issue number one. Yes, number one, because there's more than one. QC issue number one. Here is his, uh, you know, the traditional Magnus shoulder launchers. You can see it's just white plastic. The missile tips are painted red. Um, he's supposed to come with two of them. Mine only came with one. <laughs> so, yeah, he's missing one. But they plug in to their usual spot right here on the side. Obviously, if I had both of them, 
you'd have one on either side. Unfortunately, I I only have one. <clears throat> but anyway, so you have them all armed up with all of his weapons stored. So there you have that. So let's get down to transformation, shall we? Let's let's just unplug these weapons right here. Unplug the one shoulder launcher that I have. <sighs> but anyway, let's get right down to it. So, first thing you want to do is you want to come right up here. You want to untab this section right here. And raise the camera up a bit. And you're going to split the arms right here. They will fold down on this hinge. So just bring them down like that. You want to take this section right here, just push it up. And you want to push it up until you hear it click. Right there. So that's how you know it's locked into place. Once you've done that, you take this blue section right here. It's on a double hinge. Just take it, bring it back, and collapse it up. And there you have your hand. Second verse, same as the first. You just take this, push it up again. Listen for the click. Right there. And again, bring this panel up on that double hinge. And there you got the arms all done. Now, coming down to the lower body here, you want to take the side panel. You want to untab it, so you just tab it right there. You're going to take it and just bring it up on that hinge and then bring it back for now and just get it out of the way. Second verse, same as the first. Just take that, bring it up, bring it back, and you're done there. Now you want to take the legs and split them. Well, this is part of the always a little bit of a pain. You basically, you want to get this section here untabbed. Kind of be, it can kind of be a little pain in the butt here. Come on, come on, come on. Because it does lock in there quite securely. So there you go. Once you have that untabbed, you're going to take the legs and you're going to, what I'm going to do is I have to raise this camera up a little more because I'm all cramped here. I ain't got no room to operate. Anyway. So once you have this section on tab, you want to take the legs and bring them down. Like that. Once you have that done, take this section right here and you want to untab it. It's tabbed in right in here. You just want to bring that out, untab it, swing it up, and then this will end up tabbing in right in here. So just bring it around and then tab it in right there. Just bring that up, close it back up. You want to take the foot, flip it out. It's on a double hinge here. You want to take it and bring it all the way forward like that. And they just come around to the back, bring this around, and this tab will tab in right in there. And there you got a lake all done. Second verse, same as the first. Untab, bring that around, tab that in, close that back up, bring out the foot. Bring it forward, bring that around, tab it in. Now you got your legs all done. So once you got the legs all done, now you're going to take this red section here and you're going to bring this up like that. And then we work our way up to the cab section. Now what you're going to do with the cab section, excuse me as I readjust. What you're going to do with the cab section here is you want to take this front section and untab it. You see it's on a hinge right there, so you want to take it, angle it, and rotate it around like that. And then you're going to bring this wheel assembly down. And if it's not pushed forward, you just push it forward. And then you can take this and bring this into that chest cavity right there. You want to open up the front here. And you want to flip that up and flip up the head. Close that back up. Bring the head back down. Bring that up. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. There you have Leader Class Ultra Magnus in his robot mood. Why don't you want to stand now? How dare you? There you go. So you have Leader Class Ultra Magnus in his robot mode. And he looks really good. I really like the way this robot mode looks. I dig it. I dig it very much. It's very IDW. 
I like it. Now getting closer on the head sculpt, it is very Magnus! Very Magnus, very nice paint. The eyes are painted a nice blue. I dig it. And all around it is a very nice design. I just, I really like the detail work in it. The red and the blues just really pop. Very nice design all around. And the transformation is, is quite, quite clean. Um, one thing people have complained about is how, you know, the hollow gaps in the backs of his legs. These are obviously the people who display their figures facing the walls, so if that's the way you do things, then yes, this will bother you very much. Does it bother me? Not in the least. But hey, it's a thing. But, um, otherwise, it's, it's very nice. Very clean transformation, very smooth transformation. It works. Again, it's simplistic, but it works. It gets the job done. Now, articulation-wise, his head can only swivel, and it doesn't swivel all the way. You only get that much side-to-side -side movement. The arms can do a full 360 on a very, very soft ratchet. But there are indents there. Um, the arms can go outwards on a ratchet, and this little shoulder flap will move out of the way to accommodate the arm movements. So you can get full outward movements. You do get a bicep swivel, you do get a ratcheted elbow, the fingers can open and close, no wrist swivel, so it's the worst toy ever. No waist swivel, worst toy ever. <laughs> uh, legs can go forward, they can go back, only, only like one click, that's as much as I want to force it, so you only get one click forward, full movement, I mean only one click backwards, rather, full movement forward. You do get a thigh swivel, you do get, again, nice ratcheted knee joint, 90 degrees of movement there, and the feet can, you know, do that double hinge here, you can get some good forward movement, some good uh, backward movement. Uh, no ankle tilts, unfortunately, so again, worst toy ever, but his feet are molded in that angle, so he does stand in that natural A stance. So, there you have that. Now, if I... Why are you having trouble standing all of a sudden? What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? Now let me pick up Minimus off the floor because he decided to take a dive. Come here! What's the matter with you, man? Jeez. Jeez. So, here you have little Minimus. And he does integrate into Ultra Magnus by bringing down that chest plate. Lifting up the head. Now if you notice, one thing too is that he does have this big gap in his neck right here. And um, Minimus help, you know, Minimus definitely helps that. So if you open this up, bring up the head, open up this chest cavity, you can see also there is a lot of nice molded detail in this cockpit. I mean, that's really cool. Just lots of panels and controls and, and whatnot. Uh, Repro labels will have a field day with this, but it's very, very nicely done. Very cool. So you just take Minimus and you just, you know, put him into a sitting position. And you just sit him right in there in this little seat. And he fits perfectly in there. Just boom, right there. So you sit him in there. And you close that up. You bring the head down. You can see his head just kind of peeks up out of the top. You bring the Magnus head down. Bring that back up. And voila. And you can see Minimus does help to fill in that gap a bit. So it does help. And if you're wondering why is this little dude inside of Ultra Magnus, basically that's a storyline from the comic where um, the original Magnus was killed in the war and Minimus took over and became Ultra Magnus. I don't know the exact details of the storyline because it's been a long time since I read that, but that's the basic gist of it. So that's why Minimus Ambus incorporates into Magnus that way. But of course, he does have his weapons that he can hold. Another issue that people have brought up that is not really an issue on mine is that he can't hold his weapons securely. Um, if you put the gun in his hand and close those fingers up around him, I mean, I don't know what people are talking about because mine is... I mean, you know, and you see I had to shake him to do that. I mean... So I, I don't really I don't really get it because anytime I've you know taken the gun and just wrapped his fingers around it nice and secure, I mean it's it's not falling out. I mean it's not stupid loose where it's just like boom and it just falls out. I mean you see 
you know, I, I have to get some shaking going to get them to drop that. So, so you know, it's an issue. That's not really an issue because, you know, again, it's it's not a dead solid grip he has on it, but it's not stupid floppy either. I mean, you can see, I mean, he's, he's holding it. He's holding the gun. So, I, I don't know. And you can hold both weapons if you wish. And again, even on this hand, again, it's, you know, he's, he's, he's holding it. I mean, you can take him and pose him and move it around and nothing's, you know. So, I, I don't know. <laughs> and of course, you can give him his um, one shoulder launcher and just plug it into the sides here. Of course, if he had two, he would, you know, look proper, but mine's only came with one. So, <laughs> there you go. There you have that. Now, something else you can do with the weapons, which is very cool, is you can unplug that, remove this, and you can also plug these together if you want, like, a combined mode rifle. You can plug them together like that if you want, but the other uh, use for this is you can... Is a little dude in your chest drunk? What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? The other thing you can do is <laughs> you can take the shoulder launches here. There are ports on either side. I need to take it, plug it in. Again, if I had both of them, you plug one in on each side and it basically gives him his hammer, his Magnus hammer. And, um, yes, it's gotten to the point where an Ultra Magnus without a hammer is not Ultra Magnus, so I'm happy that he has a hammer. Now, this, on the other hand, this, he's, he does not hold super securely. Um, if you see right here, this panel actually has a groove cut into it, and you see right here on the weapon, there are these little, you know, little rings around it that stick out. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to open up his hand, and you're just going to slide this into that groove right there, and it goes into his hand. He can close his hand around it. Now this, unfortunately, no, this is not a super dead solid grip. And I think it's just due to the fact that this groove is not cut back far enough, so it doesn't really sit at the base of his palm. So that's why you can't really get a tight grip on it, even if you wrap, you know, even if you push his fingers on it, it's still, you know, he can swing it around. So, as far as the hammer goes, no, he doesn't have a dead solid grip on that. The guns, yes. The hammer configuration, no. It is it is pretty, pretty loose, as you can see. So, he does not hold that dead solid. Now, honestly, the fix to that would be if he just kind of went in there and just kind of shaved this curve a little further back. So, this could sit right up against the... Uh, right up against the base of his palm, that would do the trick, but, you know, I'm not going to do that, because <laughs> it's not that big an issue for me, so I don't, I don't really care enough to sit here and try to modify him, but it is an issue that is worth noting. But, there you go. So he does have his Magnus hammer. I don't really like the hammer configuration, so... Plug this one missile launcher back into his shoulder. And he also does still have that. Why doesn't he want to stand? What the heck? And he actually comes out of the package with his feet mistransformed. He comes with them back. And they are supposed to go forward, but for some reason, mine's is just kind of not wanting to do the job of standing today. I don't know why. He's been standing fine before. But again, once you turn the camera on, everything goes wrong. Because that's my luck. Yay! Anyway. He does still have these uh, ports right here, so if you want to store the weapons here, just going to holster them right here. You can do that. Totally up to you. So there you go. Now, QC issue number two that I will show you. Now, as you notice when I did the articulation, let me remove this for now. QC issue number two is, as you can see, with the articulation, he has that nice outward movement, which is very nice. This arm, on the other hand, does not move outward, and I was like, what's going on here? What's what's wrong? Why won't this move out like it's supposed to? And I'm looking at this, and I was like, wait a second, this does not 
That doesn't look like that. That doesn't know what's going on here. So then I just push this down and I realize, oh, they gave me one with two left upper arms. <laughs> As you can see from, from, from the bicep, from this bicep swivel down, obviously they gave me a left and a right, but from the bicep swivel up, they gave me two lefts instead of a left and a right. So instead of this arm being able to move out, it actually moves in because it's actually a left arm and not a right arm. So yeah, Hasbro QC. Yay. So not only did I get one that was uh, incomplete, I got one that was misassembled, so... Yeah! But, um... I contacted BBTS about it, and I'll, I'll get a replacement, but yeah, that... That sucks. I mean, should stuff like that happen? No, it shouldn't. Does stuff like this happen? Of course it does. Name me a consumer company that this doesn't happen to. QC happens no matter what, so, you know, I'm not gonna get on the you know, Hasbro is the devil's soapbox, because, you know, it happens, people, it happens, I mean, how many people bought Xbox Ones and PS4s that didn't work right out of the box, I mean, it happens to every consumer-based company, QC, just, some things just get by, you know, human error is human error, you cannot eliminate it no matter what you do, so, it's okay, I will get a replacement, not an issue, but, you know, it, that is, that, that's the first time that Hasbro QC has gotten me to this extent to where not only is it missing something, but it was misassembled. Like, that's just a double dose of QC. That granted, should not have happened, but, you know, it happens. But all in all, though, it is a very cool figure. Hopefully, hopefully he'll stay standing while I get my comparisons. You stay, stay. Now for comparison! All right, let's get right down to it. Here he is with Voyager, Combiner Wars Prime. So you can see how they scale. Here he is with Classics Prime. So you can see that. Got here. Here he is with RC. You can see. There you go. Very <laughs> RC looks tiny next to him. Here he is with Combiner Wars Stunicon. Right there. Here's a leader Megatron. You can see it like a hair shorter than Megs. Uh, here he is with Superion. You can see how he scales with a full combiner from the line. What else have we got? What else have we got? Here we got leader Jetfire. You can see basically the same height there. With jet fire. Bring in brainstorm. Right there. Get our IDW going. There he is with Whirl. Right there. There he is with the Generations Cup we got a while back. Again, just you can. See how they scale. Here he is with Springer. That's how he scales with Springer. Here is uh, overclocking. See how he scales with the uh, third party blur. Third party IDW blur. Because we need more blue on screen. And uh, how does he scale with Masterpiece? Here's MP10. So he's a little shorter. About a, yeah, almost a head shorter than MP10. There he is with uh, Masterpiece Magnus. See how he scales with his Masterpiece self. Right there. There he is with Fans Projects City Commander. You can see how those look. And last but not least, G1 Magnus, because it's precious. Magnus! Precious. There he is with G1 Magnus. So, there you have that, as far as Magnus goes. He is a very nice figure, very cool. The transformation is simple, but it works. It gets the job done. 
It's he's nice. Um, I mean, granted, you know, we all know by now leader class toys ain't what they used to be. I mean, he is he's light. There's not a lot to him. I mean, there is a lot of hollow in this guy, so there's not a lot of weight to him. Um, and that's just the nature of the beast these days. I mean, hopefully things will change, but for right now, this is what we're getting. Um, but overall, though, it's still a very nice figure. Um, hopefully when you get one, it will be uh, complete and properly assembled. <laughs> but even despite the QC that I have suffered, um, I still really like the toy. And like I said, I've contacted BBTS and that will be rectified. But um, like I said, hopefully yours will be uh, properly assembled and complete. And, uh, but yeah, he's still, he's still very cool. I like the integration with Minimus Ambus. So again, getting more of that, uh, comic influence into the toy. So, yeah, all around though, he's, he's very nice. I really have nothing bad to say about him. He gets a little drunk and likes to tip back a little bit. Don't know why, but... All in all though, very cool figure. I do quite like it, despite, you know, the bad QC on mine, but he's still cool and worth your time, so if you would like an Ultra Magnus of your own, you can always check out BigBadToyStore.com for availability. There will be a link in the description down below. And I think that's pretty much it for this guy, so don't forget to check out M Games, check out Lori Plan, follow me on Twitter, all of that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So there is the Transformers Generations Combiner Wars Leader Class Ultra Magnus. And this is MGO saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old. You grow old because you stop playing. Be a geek. Be a proud. Pull me in your face! Magnus! Magnus! I need to speak with you! Nobody talks to the Magnus! No way, no how! What a... Where did that come from? Wait... Wait a second... What the... No! Don't mind me! Pay no attention to the butt behind the chest plate! Wait, you... You got a chest minion? How come everybody's getting chest minions but me? Just... Man... Hmm... Maybe I can't have a chest minion. I wonder what Rodimus is doing. Phew... That was close. Remember, the first rule of Chest Minion Club? We don't talk about Chest Minion Club. <laughs>